regarding some features of the conference. Okay, and um, it's, it's just a friendly reminder to you, right? First of all, uh, it's about likes. Don't forget to put likes on posters if you really like the talk or the speaker or the approach of the speaker, whatever, okay? Don't forget about that. It's my first uh, reminder. The second is about hashtag English. Don't forget you may participate in a competition, right? And uh, you may get, as a prize, you may get a, a Friendly English Club membership card. So there are three cards we're supposed to uh, give to uh, those people who get most of the likes using hashtag Friendly English. All right, in the Instagram of contacting. Right, it's my second reminder. Uh, Facebook also possible, right. The third one is about broken sentences uh, activity, right? If you find, uh, if you have found your partner, again, don't forget to post it. So, and uh, you're supposed to get some prizes uh, for the first, uh, first 10 uh, pairs will get uh, our friendly bag. Uh, and one more interesting thing about Trendy English Night. It's not just uh, an important event. Uh, there will be a very, very big prize. So it's a uh, TESOL certificate program. You know what TESOL is? Right. Uh, one person will get it absolutely free. So average price of the course is 40,000 rubles. So if you want to participate and get this particular uh, uh, price, we uh, warmly invite you to the Trendy English Night. And I'll give uh, the floor to Natalia, she'll be speaking about this dissolve certificate. Okay? From Sky Academy. Um, Обучение в Канадский колледж предлагает это сделать для специальной программы, когда можно будет это сделать дистанционно. Курс рассчитан на 120 часов. И после этого мы, соответственно, помогаем вам подводить трудоустройство. Вы знаете, да, что сертификат признан по всему миру. Вы можете быть подготовлены для обменности английского языка. И, вот, и сегодня мы на вечеринке вечерней разыграем как раз один бесплатный сертификат. If you have some detailed question, currently I'm the only person in Russia who did this course and I got the certificate two weeks ago. So if you need some details about that, uh, it's, uh, it's up to you again uh, to, to come and after, the, after my talk today or at the uh, Friendly English Night. Right, so the course gives insights into uh, teaching different age groups. It's, it's uh, you know, there is um, a sort of a battle between self and soul, right? And then the method is recognition. Self is mostly recognized in Europe. The soul is mostly recognized in uh, America, Asia, and some countries. And uh, what is good about this particular course that uh, Star Academy uh, gives uh, you an opportunity to get an offer because they've got contracts, say in China, in uh, Singapore, in Japan as well. And if you if you are planning to work abroad for a couple of months or six months or just uh, a year, it's a nice opportunity because the first thing they will ask you is the soul certificate. All right, so it gives some benefit. So my talk today, uh, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm uh, Yevgeny Usachov, and uh, I work for Moscow International Academy, as well as being one of the organizers of this wonderful conference. And in our academy, uh, we do uh, pay much attention to using technology. But the previous speaker, uh, I suppose, did some interactive technological uh, talk. Uh, my talk will be dedicated to uh, involving or engaging uh, adult learners uh, with technology. I do hope that you will find some information useful because the talk is full of uh, different uh, applications and links which are absolutely free to use. 
as well as uh, the wonderful products uh, which uh, Pearson representatives uh, were speaking about. We also uh, work with Pearson products, but particularly uh, with Pearson products for teachers. At the end of my talk, uh, I'll emphasize uh, what we do and how you can benefit as well, because they're online products called Teacher Development Interactive. Well, uh, before I start, I have a couple of questions to you. First of all, raise your hands who teach adults. Okay, half of Okay, half of this. Yes. Uh, we'll be covering three key points. First of all, the role of technology in uh, ELC, in, in English language teaching. Secondly, I will uh, be covering the issue of challenges of teaching uh, adults. Of course, uh, it's different, completely different from teaching young uh, learners or teenagers. And uh, last but not least, some engaging activities which uh, online services offer today. On the screen you can see the picture of a 21st century teacher <coughs> who is supposed to know uh, some of the applications here. Are any of them familiar to you? Yes. Yeah. Which ones? <laughs> Twitter? Okay. YouTube? YouTube. YouTube. Skype? Uh -huh. Right. Anybody knows Moodle? Yes. Yeah. yeah, sure. Right. So, uh, mm -hmm. so lots and lots, but it's just a very, very small portion. Because if we have a look uh, at this uh, called iPadOVG whale, comes from the word iPad and pedagogy, right? Uh, when you get the presentation, it's not visible good enough right now. You will see that uh, mostly the core of this whale focuses on some key skills which are very important in the 21st century, 21st century skills such as uh, analyze, evaluate, create, remember, understand and apply, and corresponding applications. Actually, it was uh, created or invented by Australian uh, researchers uh, in the ELT area, and it's still developing. It's getting bigger and bigger. Before I get uh, to my talk, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you a few questions just to test how technological you are. So are you uh, a technophobe or a sort of uh, whisket in terms of uh, technology? Right? A few questions, very, very simple questions. My first question is, uh, what is podcast? Sorry? What's on audio? Who's questions? Okay. Do you know uh, where this word came from? No idea. No idea. No idea. Actually, it's just, uh, it's not acronym, it's just, uh, you know, the word which comes from two words, iPod and broadcast. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is the audio which, uh, which is uh, distributed via the internet. And uh, the good thing about podcasts is that you can download uh, it on any device. Secondly, uh, you can find a lot of uh, websites dedicated to podcasts, and they are graded by level, by topic, by the version of English, blah, blah, blah. A lot, a lot of options, right? And it's up to you if you just type in, in uh, Google or Yandex, whatever, whatever, podcast or English podcast or business English podcast or podcast for young learners. So it's, uh, it's very simple to, uh, to get access to that. Okay, good. And now we have as well podcast, video cast. The next question is uh, uh, avatar. What is avatar? <laughs> Yeah. It may be a picture, profile, profile, sort of profile, which is usually in social media sites, right? Okay, or maybe in a blog, right? So, um, again, uh, it represents uh, people's identity. And sometimes it's false identity, right? <laughs> But people see themselves uh, this way. Okay, good. Uh, judging from what you say, I can say that you are not technophobes, right? <laughs> There's an interesting theory uh, which was actually created in, say, mid-2000s, uh, uh, or just notice, as they call them. Uh, 
Um, the uh, creators uh, split all the people in a few categories. The first category is called digitally native. Okay. Can you guess what they are? Yeah. Being just uh, one year old, they can handle an iPod or whatever, right? And the older they become, the easier for them to operate technology, right? The second group is called uh, digital immigrants. <laughs> People who are not digitally native, but would like to, and they are moving in this direction. At times we say most of the teachers are. Right? I added uh, my own category to this, a digital toddler. <laughs> that, that means that you start doing first steps. You are not an immigrant yet, but you start doing uh, some activities uh, using technology in the classroom. Okay. Are there any uh, digital toddlers here? Huh? Mostly immigrants. Okay. Right. Uh, so, the talk is about engaging students, right? Adult students. And uh, I particularly like this quotation by uh, Franklin uh, Fruzer. Yeah, Benjamin Franklin, sorry. Tell me and, and I forget, teach me and I, I remember, involve me and I learn. That means that uh, students mostly learn and adult students mostly learn from doing something in particular. And in my particular talk, we'll be looking at the things which they do digitally or online. Before I move on, I'd like to ask you one more question. What uh, applications or software do you use teaching adults? Do you use any? Quizlet. Quizlet, good. And Prezio also. Prezio, okay. Any other? Quizzes. Quizzes, okay, good. Flip quiz. Uh huh, right. Any products which Olga was talking about, Pearson products, uh, do you use My English Lab? Yes. Okay, or in other books such as uh, Gateway, for instance, they've got their platforms. Or National Geographic Learning, they, they have my ELT software. So the good thing about uh, this, uh, it, they are called LMS, Learning Management System, which helps teachers to uh, manage the academic process. And uh, the key features are, you can assign a task, Students get this assignment, they have a deadline, and then you can you, you have a grade book to see how, how, how much they've done, and as well you can um, monitor their progress. Okay? Most of the, of the Pearson books have this uh, option. Yes. You may have, say, focus without my English lab or focus with my English lab. So I recommend you using it because it saves your time, first of all. You don't need to check all the homeworks and mark them because the system does it for you. Okay. The next question is, if we are talking about adults, what main challenges you face when you teach adults? Let's make a list. There are a lot of people who are not quite in technology <coughs> or using it among okay. adults. Like more among adults than among teenagers. Okay. okay. There are more technophobes among, among adults. Uh, among adults. All right. They are busy. They don't have time to okay. do homework for them. Okay. They don't have time to even come to the lessons. <laughs> okay. They don't come to the lessons, but you have to teach them. Mm -hmm. anyway. yeah. Any other challenges to face as teachers? Motivation. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, on the screen you see, you see some other challenges uh, which we have to face. For instance, uh, we need to revise, but not to repeat. Of course, for some uh, students, it may be boring or uninteresting. Recycle, but not to get bored. Again, we need to think about some uh, interactive activities. Uh, teach, but not preach. Phrase as well. So, and um, what we need to do to rely on the experience, because uh, compared with uh, young learners. Mostly, uh, we, we just uh, not only motivate them, but develop skills. Uh, some teachers, some uh, adults have these skills. Somehow. Right. Okay. Um, 
Have you heard about uh, the environment called Web 2.0, which is now being changed into 3.0? Actually, uh, on, this, on, the, on the slide you can see that all the application, uh, applications may be split up into different groups. For instance, some are used for storing information, some are used for using videos, some are used for sharing. Again, I am not going to uh, just to uh, spend time right now because you can, in the presentation you can see which of the uh, software you can use. My task will be to focus uh, on some particular uh, resources which are useful when we teach networks. Okay, and the first one is called QPromoter. <laughs> You can see the link uh, where uh, you can just find this particular online service. And this service is uh, used to develop reading skills. You know at times when we need to develop the uh, reading for GIST, and we face the situation when adults read very, very slowly. We give them just a few minutes to uh, skim the text, but uh, at some level, say, <coughs> intermediate level, or even some intermediate students, cannot manage that. So what uh, the service does, first of all, uh, you have this uh, area in which you can put any text you like. If you teach beginners or if you teach uh, elementary students, you may just uh, paste the text about my day or whatever. What happens next? This is the text which you uh, pasted or may paste. My text was about London as the capital of Great Britain, and blah, blah, blah. And then uh, this screen turns into sort of prompter. They see this uh, text which starts moving. So from bottom up. And they have to read. And the nice thing, you can change the speed. So uh, they read it, maybe initially they may read aloud if you wish. Yeah? But then we develop this skill of reading uh, to themselves, at the same time uh, increasing the speed of reading. So, uh, and it helps them actually to, uh, to get used to reading fast and fast, but still uh, getting the main idea. Okay? So it's, it's similar to, uh, to those say, devices which uh, TV presenters have when they read TV news, for instance. But it's uh, learner friendly, I would say. You may say, uh, you may change the background, maybe black, maybe white, maybe blue, whatever. It's up to you. Right. But it's a, it's a good tool just to develop the just reading skills. The second service is called Rewodify. Rewodify.com, which actually helps uh, our students to read more difficult texts making them simpler, or more simple. Again, is the resource located at rewodify.com, and it has some useful options, as well as helping them working out the meaning of some words, or difficult text, and focusing on vocabulary development. Again, there is an area in which you paste the text, and the system of, uh, automatically turns the original text into the simplified one. Highlighting the words which, uh, say, uh, may explain the meanings of more complicated words. Right? Again, we may develop this vocabulary skills. And uh, instead of using some complicated words, they have how to paraphrase or rephrase. Again, it, it, it may uh, work pretty well when we increase the level of uh, difficulty of the text. One more nice uh, reading tool. And the good thing that uh, the service has a collection of books which may be, which may be uh, simplified. For instance, if you are keen on fiction, there is a book uh, about Hakkaget, very few, or in other, some classics. And you can search by letter or by topic. Again, there is no need to uh, search for this information on the net. It's, uh, here is also. Huh? They are like reading, they are original texts. They are original texts which may be simplified. Uh -huh. 
with this program will simplify this text? With this particular software, yes. Okay, uh, another uh, service uh, developing reading skills is called DreamReader, which is located at uh, dreamreader.net. And it uh, contains selection of different texts uh, by topic, by level. Uh, and uh, again, it saves our time. I suppose you know the service uh, Busy Teacher. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yes, sure. which, is, which is a nice resource, uh, which has lesson plans and some other activities prepared. Mm -hmm. So again, this is, in terms of reading, a very good resource where, where you can find the text depending on the topic covered, depending on the level, or depending uh, on a particular, say, if you want academic English, or if you want, say, uh, sort of uh, interesting English or any other. The good thing about this service, it's not just the text. Once you select the text, uh, uh, a sort of quiz is automatically generated to check uh, comprehension of the text. Moreover, if you need to develop uh, listening skills as well, there is an audio, a corresponding audio. For instance, there is a visual, and it's about fast food. So once they read the text and check comprehension, you may do some after reading, after reading activities such as listening to it, focusing on the keywords. Again, it's all prepared. Okay. Spend time on that. The next resource is uh, just fantastic. You can't um, you can't believe how it works. It's called telescopic text, and it's located at uh, telescopictext.com. The main idea is very simple. Initially, you have a, just this very, very short sentence, I made tea, and you see that the words are highlighted. Once you click on the highlighted word, it develops into a phrase. If you click on the word made, the, I boiled the kettle. Tea, then I made myself tea. And initially, you may uh, end up with the phrase, I filled the kettle and switched it on. I bought some biscuits and I poured milk and blah blah blah. It's just, <laughs> just a, a very short example, but it may be developed into such kind of text if you click regularly. Again, uh, it's a nice idea for adults, which I personally uh, experience because once you give them an activity, a sort of creative activity, they like ideas. They'd rather say, "Give us uh, an idea" or "Tell us something in Russian." We'll translate it's easier for them uh, regarding or compared with generating something, especially at the end of the day. So this may be a good input. For instance, uh, you give them a short sentence, a short phrase, ask them to develop it, and then compare what the service does. Okay? Telescopic text. Uh, if your students are more advanced and you are aiming at developing uh, their say, writing skills, there is a service called Plot Generator. For instance, uh, you'd like them to produce a piece of writing focusing on a particular area, a particular topic. So the service gives a nice ch chance to do that. First of all, there's a list of options. It may be crime story, it may, it may be a horror story, it may be a love story, a drama. You click, you select. Uh, or you have a more detailed uh, list of options. For instance, it may be, um, I don't know, science fiction or whatever. They click and then they get this sort of um, options starting with uh, the title. You may find a particular title. I don't know. Uh, actually, it may be uh, the first love or whatever. Right? Then the ending. It may be happy end or sad end. Right, and then uh, some characters. Actually, you give your characters a name. You just type in a, in a gap, and then you uh, decide on their relationship. Right. And just clicking after that, you get the plot. Again, it's done automatically, making a few options, mostly focusing on developing writing skills. And again, if if your students uh, lack ideas or just 
want to develop their uh, writing skills using different vocabularies. The next resource which I particularly like is for listening skills development. It's called uh, Lyrics Training. Lyrics Training. So it focuses on song uh, actually uses different songs lyrics. And uh, it's not just selection of songs to listen to, but some corresponding activities based on the lyrics of a particular song. The good thing is that uh, you may use different uh, topics and the activities uh, help them to reinforce the language they listen to. Moreover, some students are really keen on uh, their favorite songs or lyrics. That's why you can find uh, those which, <coughs> which they are keen on. So it's very strange. It works pretty well with, with teenagers, not only adults. <coughs> speaking about uh, speaking activities, there are a lot of options. Uh, this site is quite, I would say, uh, relatively old. It's about 10 years old. It's called Bokaru. And of course, the developers uh, created it when we didn't have uh, Viber or WhatsApp. Does anyone use WhatsApp for speaking activities? Yes. It's a homework. You assign a homework and they send you a message and you listen and grade and check and write the feedback. Why not? And they can't say, no, I didn't get it, because you see notification. Red or not red. <laughs> okay. So Walker was used uh, before that. Uh, actually, you can make your uh, speech message and send it to the teacher. And the teacher just listens and marks it. The next one, if you are aiming at uh, exams, say Cambridge exams for adults, PET or mostly a first certificate, FC or CAE or CP. You know, in many uh, exams, they have to compare and contrast, or contrast yes, uh, pictures. In this service, they have built-in pictures to speak on. Uh, and uh, as well as, as sending you uh, their message, their message is based on what they see on the pictures. So they compare them finding differences and uh, similarities. And you can download some of, upload some of pictures. You can pretty, pretty nice activity when they do it on their own. Most of the services develop this called, it's a, some sort of hot issue called learner autonomy. Because for adults it's, uh, I suppose, it's uh, crucially important to develop their learner autonomy. Because as you said uh, earlier, mm -hmm. So uh, they lack time, they lack motivation, and this may keep them motivated. The next one I particularly like for upper intermediate and advanced levels. It's called Yuglish. Yuglish. It, focus, uh, it focuses on some key vocabulary in a context. For instance, if you practice academic English, or some idioms, or phrasal verbs, or collocations, what the service does, uh, it finds them on YouTube and you have a screen and the words highlighted. So they watch and can see the script and then practice. Again, it's a uh, it's very nice resource because you can find words used in different contexts. Because you know, uh, at times, depending on the context, the meaning of the word changes. Actually, most of the examples are taken from a corpus, if you know what corpus is. Okay. One more service uh, called Tube Wizard. This is uh, based on YouTube videos, and you have corresponding activities. And the activities are graded by level, by the version of English, and by some other options. So you select a particular uh, video which you would like to use say British English or American English and the level and the topic. So it's all at your hand. And uh, just for fun, maybe at the end of the, of the lesson, at the beginning, if you see they've come exhausted to the class, there is a nice uh, service called Grammar Gamble. You know that traditionally in Russia uh, we love teach grammar and they love doing grammar activities. 
Right, so in this uh, particular service, uh, they can combine uh, their interest or desire mm -hmm. to grammar, to practice grammar with some sort of competition. This works this way. Uh, they have a sentence which they have to uh, make right. They can bet, for instance, they have, say, dollars, euros, whatever, whatever money they bought. And then they select which of the options is correct. For instance, the sentence is tomorrow working uh, M, J, O, I. It's, and it should be a question sentence. And they have to make a choice. Again, and it's quite competitive. In my books, it, it works pretty well because they get involved. Right. So, uh, I'm getting to, to the end, but still I'd like to draw attention that uh, engaging our students as well, we uh, get some sort of inspiration from them. So, uh, and you see this one for quotation, often you find that the students you are trying to inspire are the ones that end up inspiring you. Okay? So in this sort of uh, technological uh, areas, sometimes students are better than us, and it may be a very good outcome of our cooperation. And last but not least, you will see, you will see the, uh, some useful resources. First of all, uh, I strongly recommend, if you are into uh, technology, strongly recommend you Nick Pichi, who is a, an expert in uh, digital technology. He publishes a nice book, he has a blog, and uh, lots and lots of activities. My presentation is mostly uh, based on his uh, blog. Some other useful links uh, regarding teaching adults. And uh, there's a book uh, from the busy teacher called How to Teach Adults Like a Pro. Okay, back. Yeah. All right. In the previous slide, please, before we put that, this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another expert is uh, Nikki. So, and uh, last but not least, some resources for teachers. Actually, this course is called Teacher Development Interactive, and in our academy, we offer these online courses for professional development. It's based on uh, Pearson Resource, my English lab. Uh, currently, uh, we offer six courses, but these are the cool ones. Say, teaching, uh, listening, teaching, reading, teaching young learners, TKT preparation, and uh, teaching reading. Okay. Each course uh, contains five lessons. It's based on video material by uh, dedicated uh, or recognized uh, authors. At the end, you've got two documents if you do four courses. You get uh, our most international diploma with new qualification if you, don't, if you don't have teacher of English qualification, and TEFL certificate by years, which is teaching English as a foreign language. These are the courses, you know, these are 72 hours and they are recognized, okay? This is the paper you get. Right now, diploma. All Pearson certificate. So, today you have a nice chance if you want to enroll, 20% discount. discount. And if you have any questions, I, I will be more than glad to answer. Not now.